The age of nanorobotics is finally upon us. Similar to artificial intelligence, we do not really understand the implications of this type of technology. Can it cure cancer and evolve humans into a new realm of synthetic hybrids? Or will nanotechnology form a new type of deadly weapon, which eradicates us from existence? It's hard to say what's going to happen, but the current progression of nanotechnology is shocking, and this video is going to reveal some of the front-running machines being developed right now. We will start off with something I covered before and get to number 7, which is the Miskin robot. And yes, I will admit that this is a little bit bigger than nanoscale. Nevertheless, these are fascinating robots which are mass produced on a silicon wafer. And each are roughly 70 microns long. They are very complicated and are made from solar silicon cells combined with platinum and titanium structures. So the robot moves via laser and this causes the platinum in the leg to expand, which allows the leg to move just like a limb. And as of right now, researchers are incorporating sensors, clocks, and other gadgets, but they don't have swarm capabilities just yet. Now we get to number 6, and it's probably something you have seen before, and it's called the helical robot. Now there are quite a few different magnetically controlled bots out there, but the helical shaped robot is probably one of the most impressive variants. It's a very scalable design, which literally drills through liquid. And ultimately, these bots can deliver stem cells or drugs to remote areas. Now, it is important to note that these are not like self-sufficient bots that are thinking for themselves. And they're pretty much just magnetic shapes controlled by a magnet. And as of right now, there is no imaging system which allows you to kind of see where the bot is. So you need to have a visual perception in order to control these things. So I'll get to number 5, which is also a magnetic bot. And they're basically a swarm variation. And these have the ability to clump together and push objects up to 40,000 times the volume of a single micrometer bot. It's able to clump together into swarms because of its shape, and these shapes can form swirling vortexes. These vortexes are controlled by magnetic field configurations. Luckily enough, these swarms also emit larger signals, so they can be tracked via MRI. Once again, these bots will likely deliver drugs to remote areas in the body, but they are not self-sufficient, and they can't really think for themselves, so to speak. So, we have seen that building things at the nano and even micro scale can be really tough. But, atomic deposition and nanoscale 3D printing are beginning to solve the fabrication issues. But, you still need to make a machine that is maneuverable and self-sufficient. This leads me into number 4, which is a theoretical model. Researchers have developed an algorithm for nanorobots. And this allows the bots to communicate between each other and to the outside world. Theoretically, this would allow the bots to actually target cancer cells or deliver drugs to very specific areas in the body. They have also developed a propulsion system which utilizes a capacitor as an energy source. And theoretically, this could target and be powered from higher glucose cancer cells. Now, it's still a proof of concept, but if this pans out, it could be really amazing. Now we're going to get into weird stuff and this is a little bit beyond my comprehension but it's called the DNA nanopore. I had never really covered DNA before but it's an excellent substrate for computing and it has been used to implement a diverse set of mathematical problems, logic circuits and even robotics. This is yet another bot which is built upon DNA sequencing. Ultimately it's 9 nanometers wide and it can actually go into individual disease cells and allow diagnostics at the singular cell level. Apparently it can be controlled by programmable flaps which are equipped with a side selective gating system for the translocation of macromolecules. But I have not seen any confirmation on this claim. Regardless, I'm pretty sure we're going to see more DNA types of machines in the future. We get to number 2, and I guess you can call these cyborg cellular structures. These are basically hybrid cellular machines injected with nanoelectronics. The stem cell grows around the mesh, and a miniature biosensor is formed. One neat thing about this experiment is that the stem cells can form into other cells. So with the integrated sensor, scientists can understand more about the development process of a stem cell. Now once again, this is where a pre-programmed algorithm can come into play and it might be able to tell the stem cell what to convert to in the future. Now this type of stuff makes me go into conspiracy mode a lot, and there might be a half cybernetic immortal human being out there already. We get to number 1, and it's the Xenobot. Once again, I'm going to cover these weird Metroid things that scare me a little bit. Xenobots are stem cells from frog embryos. 
These cells are differentiated into mobile heart and inanimate skin cells. These two different types of cellular structures are ultimately configured into one organic machine which can move around. But this was not enough for the team and they ran an evolutionary algorithm which mimics natural selection. It was discovered that particular configurations can perform certain jobs better than others. So in the end you get a self-repairing locomotive organic machine. Personally I kind of see this leading to organic spaceships that we fly around in or maybe we're just going to convert ourselves to the Zerg in StarCraft. I'm not really sure, but anyways, it's pretty weird. As a conclusion to this video, I would say that the future nanorobot would likely be powered by glucose or maybe some type of RF frequency. It will also have swarm integration and communication. Right now, the front-running structural candidates include DNA machines, programmed cells, and even basic magnetic bots. Evidently, we know how to build these things right now, and it's only going to be a matter of time until we perfect these machines. So, once again, thanks for watching the video. Please like it if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.